Welcome to Now College, where we talk about the college experience. I'm your host, Alma, and today I have Charlie. Hello. Aquaba. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it means welcome. Oh, yes. Thank you. Aquaba. Aquaba. <laughs> I like that. That was perfect. Ah. <laughs> well, before we get started, I want to thank you for being here and taking out the time to tell your story i appreciate you having me on the show it's uh it's a great topic so before we get started if you don't mind saying what your major was Mm -hmm. and what do you do now okay my major was radio television and film and now i work in marketing and pr (laughs) Well, technically, when I was going to school, my goal was to be a television producer. Like, I really wanted to put shows together. I really wanted to work on, like, something like The View or, what is it, The Real? Yeah. I just wanted to work in something like that because it's like, okay, you know, they have a lot of different producers that work with different segments. So I thought that would be cool. But So, then, uh, production. production. Yeah, mostly. yeah. Okay, gotcha. And you do marketing. Digital marketing is Mm. a whole different beast. I started working in digital marketing as, like, it was just a fluke. I got hired for this advertising company in Houston. Shout out to Houston. (laughs) Shout out to Houston. (laughs) H-Town. H-Town. Going down. Going down. (laughs) No, wait, they don't even say down. They say H-Town going down. That's what they say. (laughs) Yeah, you know, my mentor... She basically hooked me up with that position and I was their social media manager. That was like my first time really working in any type of marketing because it was an ad agency. So I had to post, you know, different um, people or business owners. They would pay to get posts or, you know, they would pay for ads in their paper or on their website. I had to put the images together and post it on the pages. Well, I want to take it back just a little bit. So from K through 12, how would you describe yourself as a student? Damn, K through 12? All of it. I mean, I think academically, I was pretty average. I never really, I was never really like, I have to get all straight A's, you know, but also it's like, I didn't go to school like, F all this, I'm not going to do anything. But you know, socially, (laughs) I was... You know, I like to meet people. I like to hang out. So, I, you know, I was I was pretty social. Okay. All right. What would you say uh, was your pastime or your hobby or even like your favorite subject? Hmm. My favorite subject was English. Okay. I loved, uh, I loved to read. I used to read a lot of novels. Oh, man. I remember in like elementary school, I was in the library and I found a Nancy Drew book. Bruh. I I loved Nancy Drew books. I thought they were just so great. And there were so many of them. I would just like devour those books. I loved them. I used to want to be a writer when I was younger. I wanted to work at Essence Magazine. Ooh, I can see that. Or Jet? No. Uh, <laughs> Jet, yeah, okay. So you're into English, writing, mm-hmm. um kind of literary classes at that moment this is would you say that was the case throughout k through 12 like you're like can't wait to get to english like that's my class yeah nice it's so it's just so interesting to be even like you asking these questions i haven't thought about it in so long like i used to really love writing i used to have a homegirl um a roommate like years ago she was like part of this book subscription and we used to get like books every month and we would just be at the crib just reading and then we'd have all these it it sounded like these intellectual conversations but really we were just using like words that you don't use every day but it's just when you I mean when you read more you just speak well you speak better yeah all right so you get to your senior year and you're getting ready to apply for colleges is was that the case uh describe your senior year or even junior year because it's that it's that junior senior year when you're a junior and a senior that's the only thing that 
grown people ask you, mm. what you going to do when you graduate? What you about to do? What you, think? you ain't going to just be up in here not doing nothing. <laughs> it's just like, nah, for real. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's annoying because it's like, I'm 17. I don't know. You know, I was part of this uh, group in school. I think it was like BSU, Black Student Union. Hey. Woo woo. Yes. And, you know, they bring all these people in to talk about college and, you know, talk about FAFSA. But it just all seems so complicated. Nobody really... And I'm not saying that it was completely their fault because maybe I could ask more questions. I don't know. But I wanted I wanted to go away to school. I wanted to, I wanted to go, but I just didn't know how. And I really wanted and wished that somebody would just sit and walk me through the whole thing. And nobody would. So I ended up just going to a junior college in Stockton, which is Delta College. Oh, so did you pull, did you use your own money to get into those classes? Mm, Yeah. It wasn't as expensive. Like, I think now classes or units, because you know what, a regular basic course is like, what, three units. Mm -hmm. Now each unit is like maybe $1,200 or something crazy. And I'm just like, dang, I think when I was going, it was a uh, $50 a unit. Stop Maybe it. Maybe $100. Maybe. I remember my last two years, I had to start coming out of pocket. I had that many damn credits. Mm-hmm. And um, one class, it was three, uh, we call them credits, but mm-hmm. unit, yeah, three. And it was $800. Just Isn't that one. crazy? Yeah, I know. But I digress. So, what was your major? What was your what were the classes that you were taking? You no, know, I didn't know. Like back then, I really it's like I knew what I wanted to do, but I just didn't feel confident in it. Man, it, it's just like thinking about how I used to think back then. I really just didn't believe that it was possible. But I always, my mom, she. She used to talk about how she hated her job, but she would get paid. She would be paid good, but she hated it. She hated going there. She hated the people. She couldn't stand it. And I always thought to myself, like, man, I just wish I could get paid well and have a job I really like. That's really all I want. When I was going to junior college in Sacramento, I learned about something called a BOG fee waiver. It's an acronym, B-O-G. It's like Board of Governors Fee Waiver. If you make under a certain amount, you don't have to pay for your classes. What? On top of that, if you pay for classes like maybe, I think it's like at least a year before, they will reimburse you for the money that you paid. And the only thing that you have to pay for is your books. Also, when you, and this was back then, I don't know if they still have this, but you, it's not even anything super official. You go, you, you could fill it out online and immediately it'll tell you, congratulations, you're approved. And I never paid for classes going to junior college in Sacramento. Did you find out any more um, opportunities uh, financially about college uh through that no no i i i didn't i can only imagine how much is out there but it's yeah. stuff that you have to if you didn't open your mouth and tell your friend and talk to your mm-hmm. friend and i don't even know how she found out you know y- you you wouldn't have known so right. it's like it's good to 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 talk to to ask questions that's true um okay so you're in what classes did you say you took? Um, well, you know, I was taking those general ed classes, Generalists. which are so ridiculous to me. I just finished high school, and now I'm doing this, this, these classes again. Like, I remember while I was going to school, they changed the requirements. So in order to transfer to a university in California, you had to take statistics. Mm. Now, you didn't have to take it before. Before, you just had to pass Algebra 2. I finally passed Algebra 2. And then they were like, oh, yeah, uh, we're going to need that statistics. Goodness grief. Are you serious? Statistics is, for me personally, so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do this. And then what they did, too, in California is it's like three strikes you're out. Mm. So if you take the same exact 
course, like course number and all that, if you take it and you don't pass it three times, you cannot take it at any junior college in Sacramento because there's a lot. And I remember um, before I was going to transfer, I had to take it. So I didn't pass it at all. So I ended up having to take it online at Delta College in Stockton. Even though I was living, you know, I'm from Stockton, but I was living in Sacramento. And I was so stressed (laughs) trying to pass that class. It was so hard. Did you? I passed it. Congrats. With like a C minus. That's fantastic. And I was just. Fucking passed it. (laughs) I was like, thank you. Thank you. So you finished uh, junior college? Yep. In Sacramento. Right. So I graduated from Sacramento City College. And then did you start working after that? I was working the whole time. I was never not working. Where was I working at that time? Because I was working at Comcast, then I worked at... (laughs) Then I worked at HealthNet. I worked at so many different jobs. But I always had a check coming in. Can you talk to us about your bachelor's experience yeah so uh i went to i moved to houston texas in 2014 at the very top i was on the freeway going i drove there i was on the freeway on new year's day it was like like i was telling you before it was like some type of a force like forcing me like you have to move out there you have to move away for this i had got accepted to sac state And it was funny, too, because in order to get into a California university, you had to take statistics. But I didn't have to take it to go to Texas. So I basically like, well, I'm not going to say I took it for nothing because that came up later on, Uh, actually. What was your what was your major? My major there was radio, television and film. That's right. How how was it transitioning from Sacramento Junior College to now Texas? TSU, Texas Southern University. TSU. <laughs> historically <laughs> Black College. Shout out to everybody that goes to a historically Black University. Shout out to everybody that's graduated. Shout out to everybody that's going. We the best. <laughs> <laughs> TSU is a smaller. It's a smaller campus. It actually was a good transition. I mean. Some of my classes were like that, where they were really big, but my major classes were pretty, they were pretty small, actually. So out of those years, junior college and uh, TSU, what was the hardest class? Statistics. I feel like people that can take a statistics class and it comes to them easily, their brain is just wired in a completely different way. (laughs) That's the only way you... (laughs) <laughs> so it's the only thing I could think because it's just like how can you understand this so easily I was gonna say what about it specifically was like the whole thing the whole thing the whole thing I think I still have a <laughs> hold on let me see because I think I still have a book this is a book and I had to buy this book it came with like a workbook too but I didn't uh like it was all filled out but look at look look at this but it's like when I look at it, and look at this, they got the nerve to say elementary statistics. <laughs> it does. It says elementary like, statistics. Like, this is just elementary. It's not even that hard. <laughs> and I kept, I keep it because it's just like a reminder. Like, you've been through it. You overcame this. I don't know how I did it. Yeah. And this was before that app. What's that app? It's an app where you can punch in any equation and it'll tell you the answers. You never heard of that? No clue what that app is. Mathway. Mathway. 317,000 downloads. Mm-hmm. Don't be the one that's not part of that number. It saves lives. But yeah, look, you can you can like take a picture of the equation. You can type in the equation. And it'll literally give you the answer to everything. So My last semester... Because I thought, like, technically... I was told that I had enough credits to graduate and then when it came down to it, because you know, like when you're graduating, you got to get this, it's like a packet, you got to like get signatures, that little, 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 little. Mm-hmm. And so I went and I was just like so excited, like, okay, here's my packet. And the one of the administrators, she was just like, um, mm. bitch, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> 
you think you about to graduate, but you still got to do this, 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 and this. Like, it was like some core Did they not trans, trans, trans? Some of them, some of them didn't transfer. Like, some of them, it was just like, it was like I took a history class, but then they were like, you have to take Texas history. Yeah, And I was just like, are you... Okay. Are you kidding? That's a big deal, yeah. People, you know, and even when I transferred there, because it was like, you know, paying out-of-state fees. Mm. So check this out. Obviously, when you're out-of-state, you're paying these out-of-state fees. Now, when I looked at my tuition out-of-state versus when I was in-state, I think each semester, it was like $11,000. And then when I was in-state, it went down to like $3,000. Yep. Most so, in order to get in-state tuition, and you you have to move to the state, how for how long do you have to be there? I forgot. So, first, I that's what I thought, too. You have to be living in the state for a complete year. But, that's not the case. You actually have to be living and working in the state for a year. Now, mind you, I was. Because, you know, when I left Sacramento, I was working at Payless. That was like my second job. I was working for the state and I was working at Payless. I was, you know, so I'm counting down the days. Like I already knew. I was like, as soon as I hit a year, I'm about to go in here. So I go in to the office. I'm like, hey, I just need a little application thing. I need to get this in-state stuff so I can cut this shit down. So she was like, okay, well, here's the application. So I was like, okay, cool. So I showed my lease. I showed all the check stubs for me paying my rent for the year. And, you know, I go back up there and I'm like, huh. And she was just like, okay. Well, I'm going to give it to whoever and they'll go through it. So then it was like a week later. Get it back. It was denied. Why? I've been here a year. Well, you're just missing some information. What information am I missing? And she's just like, "Uh, I mean, you're just, it's just, it's just not all there. So then I remember when I was walking out, some other girl was just like, look, if you're trying to get in-state fees, you just, you have to work and you have to, or you have to live and you have to work. Like, it's just a student that told me this because she wow. went through the same thing. So then I go back in there and I'm like, so you have to work here for a year? Why can't you just tell me that? She doesn't know. So you want me to leave and drive back home and like think and ponder and wonder when you could have just like, what are you exactly. here for? You're exactly. supposed to be help Anyway, I just don't understand why it had to be so difficult. The good part, though. And my, the best part about going to an HBCU is that the students, I feel like we all we got. That is the feeling. That is the, the vibe. I never had an issue with another student. Like, cause we all understand. We're all really just trying to get through this. Yeah. And then, you know, I brought my work checks and it had the address of where the job was. And then it was approved. Wow. And just like that, my tuition went down, down, down. And I was like, thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, yes. Thank God. <laughs> Man. Jeez. So, with that being said, what, hmm. what was your easiest class? My easiest class? I had a, uh, I had a professor, God rest his soul, Mr. Jeffries. Mr. Jeffries was... So he was so funny and he was just cool. And I wouldn't say his classes were necessarily easy, but they were, they weren't like super challenging. And he made it, he made it fun. And he had all these stories about how he worked in TV and stuff, but he was like a really cool teacher. It sounds like he made it fun or interesting, like him just being himself. If It sounds like if anyone else taught it, that class wouldn't have stood out to you right it was funny he would um you know he would talk about (laughs) he would talk about like students coming in class high and his favorite thing to be his his favorite thing to say was this this ain't the business for you this 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 ain't gonna be the business for you (laughs) okay you can't be just coming in here smoking uh uh high and and smoking all that stuff uh you know you got you got to be focused and this ain't the business for you (laughs) this ain't the business for you (laughs) and he meant that (laughs) <laughs> one last question okay knowing what you know now what would you tell yourself 
back then? Wow, that's a good question. Knowing what I know now, what would I tell myself then? I think I would tell myself to chill out. Chill out a little bit. I was very, I had, I had tunnel vision when I was out there. I was just like, I am here for a reason. <laughs> and that is to get this degree by any means necessary. When you're thinking like that, it's just like, I don't care what's going on. I don't care about no club. I don't care about, I don't care about nothing. And really, I, I just really feel like I, I could have just chilled out a little bit and had more fun. Yeah. No, I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. I, oh, and listen to my podcast. You know, I have a podcast coming. I was going to say. Okay, have, go ahead. You got it. I have a shameless plug section. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead and let them know whatever you're working on, whatever you're doing, where to check you out, all that. Go ahead. Okay. Um, my, I used to have a blog, and now it's going to be turned into a podcast called Life Lyrics and Lipstick. And it is a podcast about uplifting women and highlighting their highs and also talking about their lows and how they got through it. My Instagram is Charlie Brown Skin. So it's Charlie C H A R L I B R O W N S K I N. When I followed you, I didn't even like really read the name. That's pretty dope. <laughs> You. Charlie Brown's skin is pretty dope. I love Charlie Brown. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we all stay tuned for that for sure. Well, before I leave y'all, research your own experiences, absorb what is useful, reject what is useless, and add what is specifically your own. Bruce Lee. God bless.